everybody. Welcome back. It's Andy Timmons. Thanks for checking out my melodic muse course with Guitar World. And we're going to carry on uh, talking about the tune Shuggy. We uh, discussed last uh, episode with the guitar harmony bits and the harmonies that go with that, which uh, is what I solo over at the end. So we're going to look at how to navigate. We've got a G major 7 chord. We've got a B flat major 7 chord. So all of a sudden, a significant key shift to an F major 7 over A to A flat. And these types of chord progressions are the ones I really love the most because, you know, when you're in one key center, it can be great. You, there's, there's plenty of things to do. But I love when there's um, a chord progression that really, you know, inspires some melodic direction. It really can be some real beautiful lines to weave through some of these changes. So th this particular chord progression is perfect for that. So I'm going to play a bit and then we're going to talk about some of the uh, strategies that you can use. you through some of the elements of certainly what I like to hear when I'm playing. I, I, can, I can intellectualize these things well enough to tell you what it is, but it does have to do with uh, a lot with voice leading and just kind of melodic direction and, and what I've grown to, to want to hear as I've played all these years. Um, and the beautiful thing is that when you've got chords that have just kind of subtle changes, so I'm going from the G, G major 7 to a B flat major 7, which is a, it's, it's a key change of a minor third. But I'm always looking for common tones. And here you've got that D. It's the fifth of the G major seventh. But it's also the third of that B flat major seventh. And then you change to like an F major seven. And a similar thing, now you've got this A flat major seven. There's another uh, another common tone in, the, in between those keys, even though you're going from well, I'm just I'm just kind of recognizing how this is structured. So it's basically two major sevens. I never even realized it before now. So essentially, if you've got some things that sound good over this first chord change, a G major seven. So you might think of just the arpeggio. Uh, analyze maybe some note choice um, and, and, and scale selection if we want to think about that. I'm, I'm more in general going to be concerned with where I can find some common tones maybe as we talked about from that. There's that D that connects the, the G major 7 and the B flat major 7. And if we're thinking a, F major 7, there's that C that can connect those two, F major 7, A flat major 7. Um, even, even major scales. But because of the way these keys sound together, B flat major, I mean, a B flat major scale wouldn't be incorrect, but for whatever reason, I want to hear the E. So that's, that's more of a B flat Lydian sound, right? Let's just look at these two chords again. So G major seven, we might be able to use G major pentatonic. But I really like the sound of the G, uh, the D major pentatonic. Because it has some uh, much more interesting color tones. You've got the nine, you've got the major seven, this is the 13. Okay. So even if we just use that D major seven, I mean a uh, D, D major pentatonic. If we move that up a minor third to the F major pentatonic, then we're back over that F major. to B flat major pentatonic. 
But within all that, um, I, that I have these places I know I can go, but I'm really going to let the ear hopefully guide me as much as the brain, and I call that kind of the melodic muse. <laughs> Also looking for any subtle note change. I might look for a common tone, or in that last case, over the F. That A is the third of the F major seven, but the next chord is A flat. So that's a nice. That's going to be a nice moment. I'm going to want to feature that and kind of so it really gives the listener that that flavor of that of that tonality change. Um, so don't try it again. And that's another really nice place because you've got the F major 7, that major 7, that E, needs to change to E flat for that, the A flat major 7. So I know in that, in my recorded solo on the record, you'll hear that kind of movement featured a lot. Just because that's the type of melody that really kind of gets to me. It gets, it gets into my heart and my soul a little bit. Okay. And then from the A flat to the, to the G, uh, some more half-step resolutions that are really, um, some really potential beauty. Uh, get the G to the F sharp there, or the or the E, right? Or because it's a half step chord movement, all all the scalar things are going to also sound beautiful, just resolving down a half step. So uh, you know, record these changes for yourself. You know, either on your your phone or you've got a multi-track situation. Lay those down and just experiment with uh, weaving some melodies through those. Plenty of scale choices, but use your ear too. Just maybe try to forget some of the, some of the intellectual properties and let your ear kind of guide you. Go on a single string and. certainly recognize a recurring theme through all these lessons in that I'm as, as aware as I am of all the scalar be it pentatonics or regular scales I'm, I'm aware of those choices but really the the underlying um, guideposts so to speak are, are really knowing where those chord tones are and then anticipating where a nice subtle uh, voice leading change might occur so it may seem like a bit of work but it's it's not so much theory it's just some basic knowledge of you know, really kind of getting into your under your fingers some of the basic chord shapes and realizing what those chord tones are. It's handy if you can name them. Even if it's just visual, that's okay too, because eventually it's just all going to be about your ear the more you do this. But knowing in G major 7, you've got G, B, D, F sharp. And being able to, to kind of get to those in different places on the neck is invaluable. Even if it's just a few, you know, sections at first, if you know where that B flat is, because as we, you know, as we all, are, you know, may be guilty of, we we learn scales and we learn all the different positions. But when it gets down to making music, you know, those notes aren't always going to sound great. You know, it's, if you're on that G major seven and you're just, well, it's right, it's in the scale, <laughs> but it's, you know, unless you unless you know where to go with that. But it's all that all relates to the, where those chord tones are because it's about tension and resolution. But without that intention, it can just sound like you're just meandering and without direction. So these these the core tone awareness is just kind of paramount to really sounding musical and having you know direction and intent in your lines.